Praise the Lord, everybody. Good to be in the house of the Lord. And I'm thankful that everybody's here today, and I'm thankful for everybody that's joining us online. If, uh, unfortunately, for those of you that didn't start with us, you missed a tremendous worship service. And I'll tell you this, God is moving in this place today. And I just, I thank God that he is here, that he is answering prayers, that he is doing mighty and wonderful things. Felt like a river of the Holy Ghost flowing here today. Um, if you have your Bibles, I would invite you to turn with me today to Matthew chapter 25. I'm going to start at verse number 1. <clears throat> and when you get there, if you are able to stand with me, just in honor of the reading of the word of the Lord, Matthew chapter 25 and verse number 1. Um, and <clears throat> so I'm going to... Um, I'm going to qualify this a little bit before I read this. Um, Matthew chapter 25, just so that everybody understands and can follow me, immediately follows Matthew chapter 24. Now, I'm glad we kind of got that and we understood how that works. But the reason I tell you that is because Matthew chapter 24 is um, it's an end of the world chapter. Okay, it, it describes what's happening in the last day, in the end time, in the last moment. Um, Jesus' disciples, they, they gather him, uh, and they said, tell us what the end of the world is going to look like. And so if you read Matthew chapter 24, it's a, it's a longer chapter to read. I think it's 40, 50 verses long, something like that. Um, but Matthew chapter 25 is a continuation of that thought. Okay, so he's still having the conversation of what the end of the world is going to look like. And I want to read to you a parable that Jesus was speaking to the disciples, and he was telling them something of what the end of the world was going to look like. He says this, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps, with, and, and they took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with the lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out and meet him. Then all those virgins that arose, and tr then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps have gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. But while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him for the marriage, to the marriage. And the door was shut. Afterwards came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I don't know you. He says, watch therefore, for you know not neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Now, I want to preach to you about this story a little bit today, but I want you to look at verse 6. And it says, and, and then it goes on, it says, at midnight. And I just want to say something along the lines today of at midnight. So why don't we set our Bibles down and just lift our voice and our hands unto the Lord. Let's just worship Him one more time before we're seated. I worship You, Jesus. I declare Your glory. I declare the glory of the Lord, the one true living God, which was and is and is to come. I magnify You today, Lord. Oh, shout unto God. Clap your hands. Lift your voice. I worship You, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. You can be seated today. So this story we just read, end of the world story. And Lord, what's it going to be like? Tell us about the end. And he gives them a whole long list of things that are, are going to take place. And he comes to this and he says, you know, it's kind of like ten virgins. And, and there's five wise and five foolish. And you need to understand who the virgins are. Um, many think they're the bride of Christ, and they're not. The virgins are not the bride of Christ. See, when the bridegroom come, he was coming with the bride. 
the, the ten virgins are the bridal party. They're the ones that are waiting to celebrate. They're the, they're the ones, they, they are called to the wedding, they are called to the feast, uh, but they are the wedding party, so to speak. And, and um, so the bridegroom, he, he's coming, and there's, there's ten, ten virgins, they're called to the bridal party, and they're, they're called to the wedding, and, and they're called to all of the goodness of the wedding, and they're called to the feast. And, and I will tell you this, it, it, we understand that we are part of the bride of Christ. We are part of that. But he says this is what it's going to be like. He said it's going to be like the wedding party. That it was sitting there and waiting. And the Bible says that there were, there were five wise and five foolish virgins. And the, the five wise and the five foolish, they all brought oil in their lamps. And the Bible tells us that, that they all had oil in their lamps. But only the five wise brought additional oil. And so on their way to the wedding, or, or they got to the place where they would, and they shine, but they don't shine very, very brightly. And I will tell you, uh, over the last, and, and I like to study revival, and I like to study the places of revival and the things of revival, and, and there's, there's much I, I could tell you about that subject, but I will tell you over the last hundred plus years, there have not been very many bright shining places. There haven't been many places that really stood out that said there's a sovereign move of God. What we've seen in the last hundred years, we've seen the rising of the megachurch. And I'm not telling you every church is bad and, and, and all of this. Quite the contrary. There's good men that have good hearts and they're reaching for people wanting to see them saved. But let me tell you, over the last hundred years, much of the time has been, sent, been spent in the daylight. Much of the time has been spent where the lamp was lit and it just didn't offer that big of a, a brightness, that big of a glory. Okay, we haven't seen that many sovereign moves of God. I, I could tell you about the 1950s and what God did in the Hebrides Islands and how God shook that place, literally shook it, and, and caused many to fall upon their knees and cry out to God. Uh, but mostly what we've seen, we've seen the advent of the big church. We've seen the advent of putting down the things of God and raising up programs and raising up this and raising up that. And, and we've got these mega churches and they, they shine bright in the day. Okay, and I'm not picking on, on them. It's what they had to operate in the moment in time. But let me tell you, when the evening came, the Bible tells us that all the lamps went out. Matter of fact, all of the, the virgins slept. They were all sleeping and they were all tired and they were all worn out. None of them, none of them were up. None of them were working. None of them were busy. And, and we don't find anything where God reprimands them for that. But what we find is at the midnight hour, at midnight, now I, I just, this really caught my attention. It was at midnight that the cry came, the bridegroom is coming. He is on his way. Now, amen, the bridegroom is coming. And I want to say this right now, and I'll, I'll explain it a little bit more in detail in just a moment, but Jesus is coming. Jesus is on His way. Jesus is coming back for His church. Jesus is coming to wrap His arms around them that love Him and serve Him and worship Him and live in faith. Praise God. At midnight, the cry went out. The bridegroom is coming. And so they all get up. Now it's not light no more. It's midnight. It's dark. Now, I'm going to just say this. I feel like a darkness has swept over the earth. I, I feel like things are moving in directions, uh, viruses, elections, and, and this and that and the other thing, and, and whatever. It feels like midnight. It feels like it's dark. I, I'll tell you this, that every church program is shut down. These mega churches that had 20,000, 30,000 people coming, they don't get 20 or 30,000 people coming no more. And those programs they had, and this and that and the other thing, it's all gone. Because they can't work at midnight because the lamps are out. So, so they all wake up. And the Bible says they all trim their lamps. And how do we know they all had oil? Because the, the, the five foolish virgins, as they trimmed their lamps, they said, give us your oil, because ours have gone out. So we know they had some amount of oil. But here they are, they've run out, they have none. 
And the Bible says that the five wise virgins said unto them, Go and buy from those that sell the oil. Now, I'll tell you what. As I read this and I thought about this, this hit me like a ton of bricks. You see, the five wise virgins, when the bridegroom came, he gathered them unto him. Right? Okay. Jesus is coming. Kevin is coming. And he's going to gather those wise virgins unto him. Because they had their lamps lit. Because it wasn't a program that they were living on. It wasn't just, well, come to church and fill out a card, say a quick prayer, and God bless you. You're good for the rest of your life. It wasn't nothing like that. What it was was people coming to church, getting on their knees and humbling themselves before God and crying out and saying, Lord, I recognize who I am. I am a sinner born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and I need a sovereign move of God. I need the oil flowing from the Holy Ghost. I need the oil that only comes from heaven i need the oil that only god you can give me and it was at that place that those wise virgins filled their vessels with oil from the very throne room of god but i'll tell you the five foolish virgins they filled their vessels they filled it with the things of this world they filled it with things that would not last I, I could tell you one of the greatest revivals i've ever read about the welsh revival in 1902 three and four and how God poured His Spirit out, and one after another, hundreds of thousands that received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That all happened through the Presbyterian Church. But let me tell you something. The Presbyterian Church, and yes, I'm naming them. Today they are like virgins without oil. Today they no longer have a relationship with God. And it's all about, well, you just put your name on the roster and you're part of our church and you can come. Let me tell you something. God doesn't let people into heaven like that. It's whosoever's name is written in the Lamb's book of life, not whoever's name is written on the church registry rolls. And I will tell you something. We need the oil of heaven. That church at one time, they had the oil flowing from the throne room of God, but they turned, that th they turned it off and said, Said, send us the programs. Send us what the world wants. Anybody ever seen a questionnaire where it said, Whoa, what would you like to have in a church today? Well, you know what? That question is completely irrelevant. It is completely irrelevant. It's not what I want in a church. It's what I need in God. I need that flow of oil that comes from the throne room of God. I need a sovereign move of God. I've got to have a relationship with Him. I've got to be washed in, in the baptism in Jesus' name that my sins are remitted and I am full of His Spirit. It ain't what I want. It's what I need. It's the oil of heaven. Praise God. So this is what really messed with me when I read this. The five wise virgins, they came and said, give us of your oil. They said, you don't understand. I'm not the giver of the oil. I can't give it to you. I can't give it to you. It's bought and it's bought with a price. It's bought when we yield our heart and our mind and our soul with everything we've got to Jesus Christ. That's where you get the oil. But listen to what they said. They said, go and buy it from them that sell. So now the church, or the, 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 um, the not-so-smart virgins, they turned to the world for their oil. They, they, turned to, they turned to people that would just sell a commodity, that they would sell something, and they couldn't find the oil. They couldn't get the oil that they needed. And the Bible never says that they got the oil, if I, if I remember reading this correctly. But it says when they returned to the bridegroom, when they got back, the bridegroom didn't say, you're too late. He said, I never knew you. Because you don't have the oil that flows from the throne room. You don't have what it takes to get in the door. Think about it. There were ten of them. And they all thought, I'm good to go, I'm good to go, I'm good to go. But it was only those... Only those that had spent the time to purchase the oil from heaven. Only those whose hearts burned bright for the things of God that were allowed into the wedding. Praise God. 
Praise God. I was uh, I was driving down the road this week. It was Thursday. I put a lot of miles on. I went to Fargo and I came back and then I went down to uh, Davenport and I just I had a lot going on this week. And uh, every day I was praying, saying, God, give me a word. Give me a word for the church. Give me a word for the church. Uh, I've been preaching long enough to know how to preach. I could come up here. I'm sure I could come up with something that would be fun to listen to. But I don't ever like to do that. I don't want to do that. I want fresh oil every week. I want a word from God. So I'm driving down the road, and I, I try to keep my passenger seat clear. I don't, I just, this is just me. I'm not telling you it's wrong to have stuff on your passenger seat. I'm just telling you what I do. And I was driving down the road and I said, Lord, come sit with me. Come sit with me. I said, I need to spend, I, I just, I need to talk to you about some stuff. And so I was sitting there and I was talking and I said, God, I, I said, I need a word for the church this week. I need a word. You got you to tell me what to tell them. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, tell them I am coming. Now, I want you to know Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. I believe that we are at the midnight hour. I believe that we are sitting in the same place that those ten virgins sat. The midnight hour was not the moment in which the bridegroom came. The midnight hour was the place, that, the announcement of His coming. And I'm going to tell you something, we live in that midnight hour. I'm telling you right now, I feel like the Holy Ghost spoke to me and told me to tell you that He is coming. He is on His way. It's imminent. It's going to take place. He's coming, and He's coming soon. Praise God. So, I'm going to just leave you with this, just so I'll make sure I said what God told me to say. Jesus is coming. Amen. So, I wasn't done with my conversation to the Lord. I said, you know, Lord, I said, I'm, I'm kind of perplexed. And I, I, I'm gonna, I want to put this out there right now, just so everybody knows where I'm coming from. There's no confusion. If God wants Donald Trump to be president for the next four years, Donald Trump will be president. I, I, I'm going to say what Job said. God can do anything. Okay? going to put that out there. But I had some questions for the Lord about this. I did. I, I, I reminded God of a prophetic word that went forth from a guy who uh, I never knew him, but he seemed to be accurate on a lot of stuff, seemed to, to know it. And he prophesied that Donald Trump would become president long before Donald Trump ever announced he was running for president. He, long before any of that happened, he just he announced, uh, I feel like God told me, Donald Trump was going to be president. And uh, he prophesied it. He prophesied it openly and boldly. And then he prophesied what seemed to be, and it's a little bit cryptic, and you got to kind of look for it, but it seemed to prophesy that there would rise a Supreme Court justice um, that would do God's work. And, and you know, I'm just going to say, it just seems like Amy Coney Barrett kind of fit that bill just seems like it, okay? I'm not telling you I didn't see the prophecy. I didn't prophesy. I'm just trying to take what was said and try to have some understanding of it. So I said, you know, Lord, I said, I don't get this. I, I said, by all accounts, it looks like we could have a change of presidency. It's what it looks like. And uh, I said, Lord, you prophesied this, and, and you, you know, okay, this doesn't come by man. You, you know, if it came by, by God, the voice of God's going to come to pass. I mean, it's going to happen if it was the Lord that inspired it. So I'm talking to God about that. I'm so, like, Lord, I don't get it. I don't understand. You know, why are we going through all this? You know, why, why are we at where we're at if what you said is true? Now, the Lord never spoke to me, but immediately my mind, it was like somebody turned on a switch. And there was a scripture that was right there. And this was a scripture. It was from Matthew 24 and 22. Let me just share with you a little bit about what was going on when Jesus was giving this Matthew 24 and 22. The disciples pulled him aside and he said, you know, Master, tell us about the end of the world. What's the end of the world going to look like? And the Lord said, uh, take heed that no man deceive you. This is in, in verse 4. 
For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, they shall deceive many. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. But he says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. This is just the beginning of what's about to happen. Okay. And then he goes on, he talks about how people are going to be delivered up to be killed. Uh, people are going to be offended for, because of Jesus. They're going to hate one another. There's going to be many false prophets. Uh, iniquity is going to abound, and the love of many is going to wax cold. Uh, but we've got to endure to the end. So, so this is the setting that, this, that, that Matthew chapter 24 and 22 comes out. And this is what the Lord, I felt like, just boom, just laid this on my heart. It says, except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. I said, Lord, is this what's happening right now? Is this what we are witnessing taking place? The shortening of the days. Now, I'm going to tell you, God never answered me that. But I under understand this. There's a lot of things. If, if, no matter what happens, whoever becomes president, whoever and I'm going to say this, if God is for Donald Trump, then Donald Trump has four more years coming. It's just going to happen. How? I don't know. I don't even care. I'm just telling you, Donald Trump will be president. And if God is done with Donald, president, or Donald, Donald Trump, he's done. He's gone. Okay, I'm just going to leave that there. But you have to understand, the Lord said, I am shortening it for the sake of the very elect. That everything that is happening today is for your good and for my good. Because God wants to do a mighty work in our lives. Let me say this, just in case I haven't said it. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And we have got to pursue that oil of heaven like we have never pursued it before. It's got to be something we're hungry for. It's got to be something that when we get up in the morning, we say, Lord, I'm parched. Fill me up with the oil. I've got to have a new dose of you. I've got to touch heaven again. Praise God. So I'm driving down the road. And God's already, I feel like he's given me a lot. Okay, I'm just feeling like we've had pretty incredible conversations so far. And the Lord brings back to memory. I have forgotten all about this. But in August, it was, I can tell you the date, it was August 22nd of 2019. So way before coronavirus hits. There's a man by the name of Daniel Scott penned a letter to our general superintendent, the general superintendent of the United Pentecostal Church, of which we are part of the United Pentecostal Church. David Bernard is the general superintendent, and I will say this, he is an incredibly godly man. He is an amazingly wise man, and he hears from God. Um, he pens this letter to David Bernard, and this is not the whole letter, this is just a piece of it. And said, this morning in my usual five to six devotion, God again spoke with me to send this to you. Please allow me to be candid. I feel that in light of what God has spoken, we should prepare with a stark faith to ensure the soon coming harvest. I believe this with my entire being. I have listened carefully to your messages of late and feel that God has you in this place to facilitate the future direction of the church and the care of the harvest that is to come. Now this is what he spoke to Brother Bernard, and then this was the prophecy. He says, My son, I will send devastation upon the United States, the like of which has never been experienced. The devastation will come with destruction multiplied times over, and the people will tremble. And I will do this to bring the nation to its knees. Even the kings of the earth shall be clothed in fear. The entire, uh, the entire population of the United States will then know the paths of treachery their leaders have traveled to destroy the faith of so many. My people who are called by my name will be tried severely, but my purpose will be to show myself to be their God even before I come to gather them to me. But the end is not yet. 
I, this will take place just prior to my return. And I will use the devastation to cause many spiritual prodigals who have turned away from me to return and to reconsecrate their lives to me and to many that have left the love of righteousness and the gospel to realign their principles. Also, I will bring multitudes to know me because at that time there will be a revelation that all men everywhere will know that I am the only Lord God. I want to say this. I want to be clear, and I want it on record. Jesus is coming. The Lord is coming. The Lord is reaching out to people like He never has done before. I will tell you, today is the day. This is the moment of repentance. This is the moment of salvation. This is the moment that if we haven't ever been washed in the power of the blood in baptism in Jesus' name, we've got to run to the tank. If we've never been filled with His Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, we got to get a hold of the horns of the altar like we never have before and we got to pursue the deep things of God we got to say God let that oil flow out from under the throne and God don't let it stop coming down on top of me praise God hallelujah come on let's put our hands together today hallelujah I believe we live in the days of Elijah. And in the days of Elijah, it was hard. Jezebel killed the prophets. The church was hiding out in caves. Let's just say imprisoned in caves. But it was in that atmosphere that an unbelieving king had an encounter with God. And an entire nation went from a place that they had only heard about the things of God to a place where they encountered God. I tell you today... I tell you today, God is pouring out His Spirit upon all flesh. The likes and the bounds of this revival go far beyond the United States, but it is something that will be world-encompassing. It will be a world move of God. And today, we've got the opportunity to reach out and say, God, please endue me with the oil. God, please let the oil flow. Please let the oil flow. If you're watching this video from home, I don't care where you are, but if you're feeling the presence of God and you know you need to pray, you know you need to get a hold of God, I would tell you to pray. And if suddenly something happens and you want to speak in a language that you never heard, you never knew, you don't even understand what's going on, I'm going to encourage you just let it go. Let it flow because God's doing something in your life. It's the oil.